All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't move around. I'm tethered by this microphone cord because we're worried about the wind not coming through. To all y'all in YouTube, the sacrifices we make for you. All right, we are gonna be in Revelation chapter 18 today. The airplane wants to listen. You know, I preached on this chapter before at Round Prairie Community Church, and I went back and looked for it, and I couldn't find it. it that doesn't mean it's not there, I just don't know what I titled it. And now that I think about it, it could be under, I used to have a YouTube channel called Pastor Joe Fox. Maybe it's under that. I would like to go back and look at the old one though. And I don't know why I preached on it, but I did. I remember it. All right. Hey, last week's sermon, over 5,000 views. Wow. <laughs> That's huge for show, little old Shofar Mountain in the mountains. Wow, we're becoming a mega church. <laughs> All right, hallelujah. All right, chapter 18, verse one. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. All right, after these things, last, wow. Well, it's not hot, so that's good. Last week, when we looked at chapter 17 of Revelation, the whore of Babylon, uh, we saw the fall, the rise and the fall of Babylon. That's kind of what was going on. And so when we read here, after these things, after he saw that, then another angel, another messenger comes. Uh, I said something on the internet not that long ago, and I got a lot of questions on it. People didn't know this. You do realize that all messengers, all angels are male, right? They're all male. There's no female angels. We don't read about one in this whole word. Um, so I saw another angel, messenger, come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lighted with his glory. So this angel is distinct from the other angels in that this angel had great power. You know, all angels have great power. Right? So this one has even more and greater power. And it says the whole earth was lit, lighted with his glory, Shekinah glory. It doesn't say, I'm just thinking this might be Michael. Michael is a higher level messenger of Yah. And I think it might be Michael. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So Babylon, which, and does anybody have a different word than devils? Demons. It's demons. Babylon has become this cesspit full of everything that's evil and the angel says with a loud and mighty and strong voice, Babylon the great is fallen. That's great news. This is good news to us that Babylon has fallen. Now, when Babylon falls, possibly in our future, like in your personal future, are you gonna treat it as such, as great news? I gave a sermon, I think it was at Straightway, and I talked about Babylon, and I got to kind of the, where we're going in today's sermon about what I think is actually gonna happen. And I said, when that happens, you're gonna see me going, yeah! Who heard the conspiracy theory about the Jews dancing in the street when the World Trade Center was hit? You guys didn't hear that conspiracy theory? They saw some Jews going, hoot, 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 because the World Trade Center was crashed, because they knew we were going to war with Islam after that. When Babylon falls, I'm gonna be doing a little happy dance. I hope you'll join me. Verse three, for all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. There's that imagery again. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich, have grown rich through the abundance of her delicacies. If you look at who they're talking about here, for all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath, the kings of the earth. Today, who are the kings of the earth? 
Huh? Presidents, prime ministers, leaders of nations. There's also behind them other people that you might as well call them kings. They, they control a lot of things that are going on. So the kings of the earth are tied into this Babylon. The merchants of the earth. Now, do you think when we read here the merchants of the earth, they're talking about the little guy that uh, makes shoes or fixes electronics. Does anybody fix electronics anymore? Who has a little shop and does something? That's not what they're talking about. They're talking about huge, wealthy, living in sumptuous houses and all the glory of Babylon, <clears throat> fake glory. Um, they're talking about multinational businessmen, leaders of multinationals, that kind of thing, if you put it in today's um, talk. So politicians, world leaders, big businessmen. Oh, so I got to unbutton my shirt for this part. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. People are like, I can't believe you're a pastor. <laughs> okay, here it comes. Coo hemp. Ready? Verse four. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. Come out of her, my people. Coo hemp. Why? Why does it say come out of her? So you don't partake in the plagues. And so that by partaking in the plagues, you don't receive of the sins. And if you stay there, you're gonna partake of the sins. You can't help it. It's all around, everything's going on. Come out of her, my people. The other reason he's saying come out of her, my people, because this is dreamy what we're seeing here. It kind of goes forward and backwards in time. We already saw the destruction of Babylon and then we're hearing about it again, right? So it's kind of back and forth, back and forth. If you're in Babylon, Babylon's gonna get schwacked. Good people in Babylon are gonna be schwacked. Lot's wife turned around to look back, she got schwacked. She got turned into a pillar of salt. So this angel is saying, come out of her, my people. And I have echoed this angel over and over and over. I am preaching to the choir here. Y'all are here. <laughs> Ain't no Babylon right around here. Not, not the kind that we're reading about here. Y'all on YouTube, many of you are trying to hang in there. This message is for you. <clears throat> Verse five, this is how bad it is. For her sins, Babylon's sins, have reached unto heaven and Elohim has remembered her iniquities. Yah sees everything, right? He's om, omniscient means all-knowing, omnipresent means he's everywhere. What's all-seeing? Is there a word for that? Omni what? Omnivisual. He sees. He knows what's going on. There's nothing hid from him and his understanding. And thank him for our sake that he's a patient Elohim. For us but you know what even his patience has limits and in this case he's had it it's like that's enough and for the last couple I wouldn't say generations but like decades or 20 year periods of time people have been saying how much longer can this go on it just gets worse and worse, I'm talking society, and worse and worse, and the stuff that people are saying is okay, not only are they saying it's okay, but if you don't verbally support it, let alone don't even think about speaking against it, if you don't verbally support it, we're gonna ruin you. We're gonna ruin you socially, economically, or whatever. How much longer can this go on? Yah sees everything. Somebody asked me recently, because I say Yah a lot in my videos, they said, what's this Yah? Where's that? That's not in the Bible. Uh, it, it's all through the Bible, but the one time it's actually written in King James, I wrote it down here, Psalm 68, 4, says Yah. It, but it's all through the Bible. That's another teaching for another time. All right, six. So her sins have reached unto heaven. That was in five. Yah remembers, Elohim remembers her iniquities, her sin. What is sin? Transgression, Transgression of the law. It's breaking Torah. And boy, are they. 
Reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she has filled, fill her double. So when this angel is talking and saying reward them, who's, who's doing the rewarding? Who's being asked to do the rewarding? Huh? Yah. The angel is crying out to Yah to Yahweh, to God, to Elohim, to reward Babylon. In fact, reward her double. This reward is, is kind of, is sarcastic the right word? It, it's not a good reward, right? It's a punishment, and that's what he's saying. Punish her. Oh, go ahead, yeah, reward her. Reward her double. Fill her cup double with, with what's coming. Um, see, that's a righteous... Asking for, almost demanding, it's not demanding. Seeking Yah's vengeance. It's righteous. It's not, oh, love the sinner, hate the sin. God, please change their mind. No, that's it. He's had it. You know what? Reward them. There's a reward coming. We're going to read about it. It's a heck of a reward. It's why you need to come out of her, my people. Seven, how much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. I can't believe. Can you imagine if, you, if you're walking down the street and you're like, they deserve torment and sorrow. They're like, that's not a very Christian thing to say. Do you think this angel is speaking what Yah wants him to speak? You know he is. He's Yah's messenger. Reward them with sorrow, torment. For she says in her heart, I sit a queen, and I am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Oh yeah? Check out the next verse. You think so, huh? You think you're sitting there high and mighty in your Babylon luxuries. Nothing's going to happen to you. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is Yahweh Elohim who judges her. How long? One, How? Day. one day. The destruction is coming in one day. Poof. Does somebody have something else for utterly burned by fire? Consumed. Utterly consumed. It's completely destroyed. Utterly burned. Burned to a crisp by fire. Who wants to burn? Who wants to burn? Come on, there's cool stuff in Babylon. Eh, we may burn, but maybe not. Let's go. Utterly burned. This says in one day. We're going to get more specific as we go. Nine. And, oh, and who's, who's responsible for this burning of Babylon? Yahweh. Yahweh. Yahweh who judges her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. So the kings of the earth see the smoke of her burning. They were not utterly consumed. They weren't there. I think they knew it was coming. Do you remember when we read uh, last time? The harlot, the mother of harlots, is the Babylonian system, right? And what happens at the end? Who turns against that system? The kings! The ten kings turn against it, right? They use it to get there, then they turn against it, and then Satan takes that and comes to full power as the Antichrist. These kings, I submit, see what's coming, and they absent themselves from the physical environs of Babylon because they see it, and we're going to see later, they see it from afar. 
Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning. All right, nine. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, they're going to bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off, there we go, for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in how long? One hour. One hour is her judgment come. Has anybody here read the book, Alas, Babylon? The title comes from this verse right here, Alas, Babylon. It's a post-apocalyptic book. It's pretty good. Written like in the 50s. Um, the kings are sad because their moneymaker, their, their fun place is gone. They see that happening. They cry, Alas, Alas, Babylon. It says they're standing afar off for the fear of her torment. That's a clue. They don't walk up and kick the ashes in Babylon. They don't go digging through the rubble for some trinkets that were left behind. They're staying far away for the fear of her torment. In one hour. We'll come back to that. How was it destroyed? How was Babylon destroyed? Fire. Fire. Right? And they're afraid to go close because of the torment. That's a clue for modern times. <clears throat> One hour. Who saw on TV, if not in person, the, the Rodney King riots in L.A.? Big chunk of L.A. was on fire. It was on fire for a while. Who saw the fires in Minneapolis? Target's on fire. This is on fire. That's on fire. Was Minneapolis destroyed by fire? It was not. There were a lot of fires going on. There were more in L.A. when L.A. was burning for the Rodney King rights. Was L.A. destroyed? No. This is utterly destroyed, and it's done in one hour. How long did the World Trade Center, well, I guess it collapsed. It, it didn't really burn. And then Building 7, which wasn't even related, it collapsed too. Isn't that amazing? Boy, I, all right, I don't want to go there. But in one hour, this whole Babylon burns. That's another clue. Eleven. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buys their merchandise anymore. I'm going to come back. We'll read to 14 and come back. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all tyene wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron marble and cinnamon and odors or perfumes and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil, fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots, which is like really fly rides, and slaves and souls of men and the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee and thou shalt find them no more at all. It's bookmarks on this chunk of scripture. First of all, all that stuff listed is representative of high living, good things, luxury, that only good money, lots of it, can buy. The best caviar, the best champagne, the nicest clothes, the coolest sofa, the biggest apartments. Dun, 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 that, that's what this all is. It's just everything that these rich, world-leading elites better word, elites are lusting after, is gone. Now notice something in verse 10 and in verse 14. Oh, 11. The merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, and no man buys their merchandise anymore. And then go down to 14. Thou shalt find them no more at all. These nice things, when Babylon gets destroyed, they're done. They're not coming back. No more. These merchants who were getting all their stuff, they're not going to be able to replace it. They're not going to be able to get any more. No more forever. The stuff is going away. The bling, the, the luxuries are going away. And so my question, not to y'all, because y'all are sitting right here in the woods, but to you at YouTube, is why are you still struggling day in and day out for that stuff? Why are you doing your nine to five, fighting the system, going in, working for the man and doing this crap for what? It doesn't matter. This stuff is all going away. Never more will they find it. Why do people struggle for it? 
The merchants of these things which were made rich by her, sounds like, listen, sounds just like we read before, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. They're not getting close to it. They're standing far away for the fear of her torment, of, of Babylon's torment. That's another clue. And saying, verse 16, alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, here we go again, and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour, so great of riches is come to nothing. And every shipmaster and all the company of ships and sailors and as many as trade by the sea stood right up next to it. What's it say? Stood afar off. More clues. How long does this destruction take? One hour. Start, finish, done, utterly destroyed. Nothing's coming back. One hour. Standing back because of the fear of the torment, standing away from it. And another clue here, they can see it from their ships. It's a coastal city. You can see it from the sea. It's not Wichita. You can't see Wichita from your ship. So it's another clue. Nineteen, and they cast dust on their heads and they cried weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour she is made desolate. So this ship, this city, which made shipping rich, the offices for shipping magnates are in this city, Babylon. In one hour, it's destroyed. One hour. Again, I'm not talking to the Shofarians. I'm talking to YouTube. These people are not going to be able to bug out. It's one hour. You're not going anywhere in an hour in a city like that. It's over, done. Come out of her, my people, doesn't mean come out of her, my people, when you see the fire kindled. It means come out of her, my people, now so that you can avoid the sin and avoid the plague. There's total desolation in this city. Any city of any worth today has millions of people in it. Millions. 9-11, which was a shock to our country and it changed the trajectory of the world. How many people were killed in America on 9-11? It's like 3,000 something, right? 3,000? No offense to the families. I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. I am. 3,000 is nothing compared to the millions in a city that are going to be incinerated to nothing in one hour. That's nothing. It's millions. How sad. So when you hear that this city is incinerated in an hour and all these people died quickly, Here's what you're supposed to feel. Verse 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for Elohim has avenged you on her. Woo-hoo! <laughs> burn, baby, burn. Disco inferno. We're supposed to rejoice. See, that doesn't feel right, right? You're sitting there thinking, that's not a very good way to feel about all these poor people who died. Oh, heck no. Rejoice over her. Heaven. And ye holy apostles and prophets for Elohim, he has avenged her on you. Avenged you on her. And a mighty angel. Remember this was a what kind of city? Where, where's the city located in the middle of the country? It's a coastal city. A mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Now, before this millstone is cast into the sea, what's the state of Babylon? Burnt to a crisp. Totally crisp. So now... 
He throws this into the sea and the Babylon shall be found no more at all. There will be not one trace of Babylon left. And the voice of harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpeters, these are heavenly hosts. No, these are the ones there, I guess. Shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more in thee. It's desolate. And the light of a candle shall shine no more in thee. There's nobody living in the rubble of this, of this thing. And the voice of the bridegroom of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. Your merchants were the great men of the earth. The mighty men, the powerful men of the earth. For by sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and all that were slain upon the earth. It's another clue. In this city, Babylon, was found the blood of the saints and all that were slain upon the earth. The blood means the guilt of the people who were killed. Remember, uh, one of our presidents had a thing. I think it was Truman. The buck stops here. Responsibility stops here. I'm the big dog. This is what that's talking about. The blood is on, the blood be on your hands, right? The blood is on the hands of the people that were in Babylon. These deaths were planned in Babylon of innocent people and other people all over the world. So now, where in the world, that's the end of the chapter, but we're not done. Where in the world do the kings of the earth regularly meet? New York City at the UN. That's where the kings of the earth come together. Do they live there? No, they come in and they go out. They come in and they go out. But when they see it go, they know what's happened, right? That's the kings of the earth, they're in New York. Where is the world center of finance located? Wall Street, Wall Street. New York City. That's number one. Number two is London, but number one is still Wall Street. Give us some time. But number one is Wall Street. So the financial nerve center of the world, they say if, uh, what do they say? If Wall Street sneezes, the rest of the world catches a cold or something like that. So that's there. Where's the World Bank headquarters? Anybody know? Washington, D.C. We're talking merchants too, right? We're talking kings and merchants. The World Bank is located in Washington, D.C., the headquarters. Where is the headquarters of the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, which if you try to opt out as a country, America comes to war with you and replaces your leader? IMF, where's the headquarters? Washington, D.C. Y'all heard of the Federal Reserve Bank? It's not federal, it's not reserve, and it's not a bank, and it's not controlled by Americans. Where's that located? Washington, D.C. The finest, the most fearsome army. And when I say army, I mean military. The world has ever known in the history of the world has its headquarters where? The Pentagon just on the edge of Washington, D.C. Both of these are coastal cities. Now people say Washington, D.C. is not a coastal city. It really kinda is. It's right up the Chesapeake Bay from the ocean. And what I'm gonna tell you next affects it just the same. I submit to you that what we're reading about here is the instantaneous destruction of New York City and Washington, D.C., and quite frankly, probably all the important stuff on our East Coast. In one hour, utterly burned by fire. What, in today's understanding, can utterly burn a city to nothing in an hour? Nukes. It's got to be nukes. Nukes are coming. And the kings aren't there. Remember, the kings see it 
but they're not there. They're like, man, that's a waste. I think they're saying that's a waste. We're not getting that back again. We're gonna have to rebuild something else. <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't there. But they're not there when it happens. They're pulling back. I submit to you that New York City and Washington DC and perhaps other is gonna be nuked out of the blue. They're gonna know they're doing it, but we're not gonna see it coming. Woof, total destruction, nothing lives there anymore. They're gone. Could something else be nuked at the same time? Absolutely, it could be. Um, but those are gonna go. And then after it's already destroyed and everything's dead, we read that an angel cast a millstone into the sea and then the sea comes and washes away the ashes. What does that sound like? A tsunami, right? Who knows where the island of La Palma is? Beautiful little island. It's, it's over there. It's off the coast of Africa. It has this volcano. Name of the volcano is Cumbre Vieja. It's a big volcano. You can look this up yourself. This volcano is going to go off, and one of the times when it goes off, the whole western side of the volcano is going to fall into the ocean. And scientists, not weird conspiracy theorists, like NOAA scientists, because when I first heard about this years ago, I didn't believe it. Look it up. Scientists have said when all that stuff from that mountainous volcano falls into the ocean, it's going to create a tidal wave that's going to hit the entire east coast of the U.S. Some people say it's going to be 3,000 feet tall. Some people say it's going to be 100 feet tall. There's a lot of argument among scientists, but there are smart scientists who say it's going to be big. They think this tidal wave is going to go all the way to the Appalachian Mountains and then come back out. Picture, if you will, nuked cities destroyed by fire in one hour, and because Yah doesn't even want the stench of that on his earth anymore, that volcano goes off, a tidal wave comes in and washes everything back out to sea. There is nothing there on the East Coast. And somebody asked me on, on my Patreon channel the other day, well, what's so wrong with living here? And I almost answered, it's on the wrong side of the Mississippi. East Coast is toast of this country. It's coming. Some people have tried to debunk this theory of this tidal wave. I, I encourage you to research it yourself. Just look up to it and look at who's saying what. Don't look at what Pastor Joe Fox, some pastor in the mountains, you know, the Ozark Mountains is saying. That doesn't matter. Look at what scientists, geologists, and people like that say about it. It's definitely possible. In any case, something like that is going to happen. I'm just submitting to y'all. I think that's what it's going to be. Nukes and then the tidal wave. Game over. I've said this before, in the final battles that we will read about, and we've, read, we've touched on them a little bit already, that in, in not there. I submit to you, we're not there because we're not there. We no longer exist as a world power. Removing the United States as a power from the world scene we don't want to hear from you anymore. You have no influence. You have no military. You can't tell us what to do, so shut up and go away, little kid. That allows the Antichrist to come fully into power. And that's why we see he gets the kings to turn against Babylon at the last minute. He uses Babylon to keep it going, and at the last minute, turns against them and destroys it. Um, that's what allows Antichrist to come to power, and nothing, no one, is able to stop that. Yah has already planned it. He's already said, this is what's going to happen. The destruction of the United States as an entity does not mean the destruction of you. The nation can go away and you can still be living. And I submit, if you're living in the Ozarks, which is a safe haven that Yah, I believe, has pointed out to his people, and I'm not the only one. A lot of people know this, Corey Ten Boom and other people. So the Ozarks is the place. I think we're going to be okay in the Ozarks, relatively speaking. Not burned by fire or destroyed by a tidal wave, certainly. Um, and not necessarily only the Ozarks. It depends on where you live. And we're given, in early in this chapter, Kuhimp! Come out of her, my people. It's a, it's a plea. It's a command. It's a, 
admonition. Come out away from Babylon. Babylon doesn't matter. I know it's so uh, seductive with all the nice things in Babylon, but that's not what it's about. We need to come out of her, and come out of her means a couple things. The first and uh, very important is physically. You got to physically remove yourself because it's going to be gone. It's going to get destroyed by Yah. He's had it. So physically. Number two, huge. Psychologically. I submit we're all, to one degree or another, still psychologically in Babylon. Definitely has its hooks in us. We have worldly things about us that we all have, me too, that we need to get rid of. We need to pull, and that we do that through the grace of Yah and by praying to Him to help us do that. It's easier when you're not in it. So you come out here, you live a life where you're sweating your hiney off in the summertime and you're cold in the winter and you're working hard. And you know what? All of a sudden, a nice ring just doesn't have a nice ring to it. Who cares? I don't need a nice ring. Are you kidding me? A nice car? I need a pickup truck that'll get up and down the hills in here in Shofar Mountain, and I don't care what it looks like because two months after I have it, it's gonna be all beat up anyway. That stuff of Babylon doesn't matter, but I'm saying when you come out of her, that gets easier to psychologically get rid of that. So that's a step. And then, of course, spiritually. The whole harlotry imagery is worshiping other gods, whether you realize you're doing it, one realizes they're doing it or not. This whole take a knee thing, are you kidding me? I'm taking a knee for nobody but Yah, for Yeshua. Not doing it. When he comes back, how many knees are going to bow? All of them. Every knee is going to bow when he comes back. I'll be going, yes, you're back. And I'll be kneeling at that time. For anything else, forget about it. Not happening. Kuhimp is a warning. Kuhimp is a come out of her, my people, is an admonition. Come out of her, my people, is basically a command. It's a messenger of God saying it. It's coming from God. It's coming from his mouth. Come out of her, my people, if you want to live. Last verse, Jeremiah 6. Let's go there. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16 is where we're starting. Thus saith Yahweh, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, wherein is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Also, I set watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the shofar. But they said, we will not hearken. And we know what happens to those people. I implore you all on YouTube, the Shofarians have already done it. Come out of her, my people. Let's pray.